So, hello everyone, and welcome to Star Trek Fenrir, the stream where everything is improv and maintaining the timeline doesn't matter. That's right, it's like, I don't know, something that doesn't matter. Uh, Fenrir is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We're set in 2410 aboard a Cerberus class that is following in the footsteps of the USS Ophion. You don't need to have watched Ophion to enjoy this game, though you're probably going to catch a few references and subtle nods if you do. You can watch the VODs for both the Fenrir and the Ophion games on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Now, today's session will continue to focus on temporal and omega particle shenanigans. Could be short-lived or it might take all our time. We'll find out pretty much in the next hour, two hours, three hours. Uh, last thing I have to say before I run the intro is that whatever support you can provide to the stream, whether it's a follow, sub, donation, bits, patron, talking in chat, whatever, it's all greatly appreciated. Just make sure to take care of yourselves first. And with that said, let's go ahead and run the intro and dive right in. And welcome back. And it wouldn't be a Fenrir stream, apparently, if someone didn't just drop bit bombs on me as the session starts. I will find you one day. I don't care what it takes. One day I will find you and thank you properly for this. Anyways, uh, welcome back. Uh, for those who don't know the routine by now, basically what I do for all my Star Trek games is I like having an opening monologue that is read or prepared by the players. And that means tonight, Mr. Maddock has a very interesting personal log that he's going to share for us. So, Maddock, take it away. Uh, computer, begin deposition statement for Commander John Maddock, sole defendant, Temporal Investigation Department, case Maddock Alpha 28, beginning on star date 87850.5. Myself and members of the crew of the SS Fenrir, along with space, Deep Space Statalis and the USS Nalor captured by Captain Sin, were contacted by a board sphere claiming that they had performed an experiment with the Omega particle that failed and caused an Omega cascade. Supposedly, the board term is used lightly as it was referencing to itself instead of the collective when speaking. Uh, present were the only ones known to survive the incident. Following Omega protocols, myself and other members of the senior staff of each previously mentioned ship and station consulted, and found the most logical and least damaging route to prevent the failure of the experiment was to travel back in time to star date 87847.7. The USS Fenrir encountered a slight issue and ended up entering normal time space on star dates 52434.84 after ensuring predestination protocols and procedures were followed for the Lieutenant Maddock present at that time frame. The USS Fenrir then moved forward in time to star date 87847.4 rendezvousing with the USS Nalor and Borg Sphere. From there, the Sphere opened a transwarp corridor and allowed the three ships to travel to the experiment location in order to prevent the Omega Cascade. However, en route, deciding to act on previous information <coughs> previously gathered through other means, the USS Fenrir redirected to a system nearby that was the location of the last of its species that had been performing experiments in order to harness the Omega Protocol, but also failed a month prior. It is believed that the assimilation of this ship led the board to perform the experiment at the Unimatrix believed to be the focal point of the explosion. Having rescued and offering asylum to the surviving members of the species in question, the Fenrir moved towards the Unimatrix to link up with the USS Nalor and to proceed to ensure no further damage to the timeline. Computer, pause log. Computer, begin reading over subsidized notes taken and inputted by other members of senior staff. It seems they created a chart they all agreed on. Timeline A. Board blow up Omega, board go to DSD, West Aid. Matic time bullshit. This leads to timeline B, where we save aliens, blow up sphere. Uh, nicely things simplified. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, computer encrypt log following expected Tempest protocols. Give status report to Catherine Angeletta regarding status report on engineering. Computer end all recording. 
Very good. So, for those who didn't glean from uh, Maddox's lovely log there to catch you up to speed, the Fenrir was contacted by the Borg, and basically the Borg said, hey, we tried stabilizing Omega again, and we messed up pretty badly. We need your help. We need the Federation's help to fix this. So, uh, a plan was hatched to send the Fenrir and the, the Nalor, another Starfleet vessel, back in time to help prevent the explosion, which reportedly was going to destroy the warp capability of anyone in the Delta Quadrant. Um, so, in traveling back in time, the Fenrir decided, well, what if we stop the whole assimilation of the species responsible for the Omega particles in the first place? So they sort of branched off. They took a fork and checked out a distress call coming from this species. And this species is very interesting, uh, specifically because they are rather unique in appearance. <laughs> So for those who can't see on stream, uh, if you will imagine a dolphin, but the dolphin has had spider legs attached to the underside of its belly and a number of eyes, eight in total, that have been grafted to where uh, between the blowhole and the nose of the dolphin. Uh, it also has uh, spinnerets and it also has, uh, I believe they're called pedipalps uh, that kind of come out from near the jaw out towards the nose of the dolphin. Uh, rather horrific to say, uh, but all said and done, the Fenrir crew was able to rescue these interesting, this interesting species known as the Zanad and uh, destroy the Borg vessel that would have been responsible for uh, assimilating the Zanad, which was interesting because the vessel that assimilated the Zanad was actually the one that came back in time to get them in the first place. So you can kind of see where timey-wimey comes into play. But uh, where we last left off, the senior staff was debating how best to proceed from here. Um, if I recall correctly, there were ideas for throwing ships into suns. There were ideas of stealing transwarp uh, coils from the Borg sphere debris, things of that nature. So as we seem to do a lot, we're actually going to start our uh, session with a lovely senior staff meeting. So, you all come into the conference room with your various insights and various ideas. And, Captain, I'm going to let you run your own meeting. <laughs> okay. So, the goal is to get to the coordinates where, forgive me, I forgot the name of the other ship that we're with. The Nalor. The Nalor. Uh, we would need to mask the life signs of our guests so they're not detected by the board when we get there of course if they don't if we don't have the material they need it's not like well they also have the knowledge of how to do it so we really need to mask their their signals so does anyone have solutions for that if i may captain we might uh, take a page from the starship voyager and their exploits in the delta quadrant i recall that they transported a number of telepaths through an area of space that was heavily patrolled by hiding them inside a transporter buffer, drawing from research and experimental te technology that had been developed by um, Montgomery Scott. I believe that he survived in a transporter buffer for almost 70 years. We could actually conceal them inside the pattern buffer of the transporter for an extended period. I don't know if uh, Commander Maddock believes that to be possible, but... Uh, Commander Lee, if you do any research on this species biology and you find something incompatible with this suggestion and Commander Maddock doesn't have any objection, I say it's a great idea. Hmm. Barring that, uh, they want to consider <clears throat> running a high frequency subspace field around a ship to attempt to scramble their scanners. It's definitely not going to be as effective. As the other idea, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good plan B, just in case. Maddox, were you going to say something? The only issue that I could foresee having with the having holding them in the transporter buffer is um, knowing board technology. I don't see why they wouldn't have access to something that would allow them to see, see, quote unquote, um, 
that we have something hidden, especially because there were, what, 200 of them, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, soft retcon, I'm going to lower that number to 65. Okay, because there were 65 of them. We could hold them. We could probably hold them comfortably with no combat whatsoever. Probably for a good week. Um, just to make sure that nothing of them kind of deteriorates. I would say I have to pull them out in batches probably for at most five minutes to get them all just kind of recircled through. Um, but you know, if we take one good hit, if we lose power, we lose them. And so it's, we would have to be very cautious moving forward about power usage and also be very cautious as to what systems we utilize um, to hide them in. Uh, for Commander, for uh, Commander uh, Williams's idea, the idea of using a uh, sensor bluff, I guess is the more simplistic way of putting it. Um, historically, it has been more effective to use. Um, the only issue is, once again, board technology does surpass our own. Uh, seeing how their usage of technology would possibly make it harder for us to hide the fact that we're obviously hiding something. Mm -hmm. We, uh, Honestly, in my opinion, the best thing we could probably do is find out long-term, ex I wouldn't even say long-term, but I would say exposure to certain kinds of particles and then just kind of flood the cargo bay with them enough to where it masks them but at the same time doesn't cause any detrimental health problems like if we fill it up with chroniton particles or if we fill it up with some sort of particles that make it quote unquote unsafe for anybody to be there and then just use that as a mask and the chroniton particles could potentially be explained away by the fact that we had just recently traveled. I like that one because it's something the Borg can detect, but something that there is an explanation for, which knowing their logic, that's what they would, would go for. So what do we need to do to make that happen? And also, how, how are I, okay, this is out of character. Mm -hmm. Was our ship unable to get to where I thought that the ship we were with, the Nalor, was they had contacted us and said, I think we it's took the detour. Yeah. So, part of the recap I probably should have included was when you guys branched off to go respond to the distress call of the Zanad, mm -hmm. uh, the Nalor continued on in the transwarp corridor until they arrived at the Unimatrix in question. Right. And they are still there, and it is something you can get to very quickly using QSD. Okay, right, um, right, right. But the problem okay. is you can't QSD all the way back to where you came from. Yeah, but we, if we go to them and just play along and do the job, then we get to go back, assuming the Borg aren't going to... Very big assumption, them. yes. We just have to remember, this is also out of character, um, but remember Rast had that clandestine meeting with uh, Redlam, mm -hmm. and he said that we had to save the species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the goal. That's the goal. We don't know why. I don't think Bree, you ever, he ever told us why, but we just have to. We just have to. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. Okay. I think we have the the nod um, thing kind of solved for the time being. So, what do we think about their ship, which has you know the material that the board are looking for? It's made of that. What I, are your ideas on disposal? I was pretty sure we had decided to fling it into the sun. 
push it into it with a tractor beam. It's gone forever. Bye bye. Assimilate that. Do we know if there's going to be any reaction of the material to nuclear fission? Let's make a roll of it. Uh, Vasar, <laughs> let's pick on you today. So, Vasar, if you want to give me a reason and a science, a uh, difficulty of one. Oh, he must be talking to someone off screen. He's like, no, I'm not talking to anybody off screen. I'm, He's just looking at a different monitor or something. Not I'm... I think he's going, no, I'm not doing it. That's what I think. Theoretical, <laughs> uh, theoretical physics apply? Theoretical physics will most definitely apply. Ooh, well, thanks. three successes, which means you start with two momentum. Good start. So what would, uh, would you like the good news or the bad news? I would appreciate the bad news first. Okay. The bad news is that it is going to cause a miniature detonation of the particles, which means that this star system is not going to be warp capable anymore. But there's nobody living here, so not a big deal. That's sort of the good news, is there is no one living here, so you can just, you know, write off the solar system. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so, this is where things might get interesting. Um, while that, te while technically under the Omega Directive, we're allowed to do whatever it takes, under the Temporal, it would still be breaking the timeline, and there's no telling how important this place may be in the potential timeline well is there a way to contaminate <clears throat> the materials aboard that ship or th that ship is comprised of to make it useless was the good oh. news that there's nobody living there mm -hmm. okay for now to answer William's question though let's go to Tobin and pick on Tobin a little bit so, Tobin, roll me a reason science of your own. This time, a difficulty of a two. Okay. Also, I, I am going you're... to use um, my augmented ability reason. Okay. okay so Go ahead and use uh, momentum. And, okay, well, momentum, so 3d20. Applicable focus. For you, Several yes. Mechanics, you, you've dynamics. definitely got a few that could apply here. Four successes, which is Ooh. two momentum. I believe you're up to three right now. And five because of the augmented uh, ability. You're right. So you're actually up to four momentum. So uh, what you recall or pull up on a data pad, however you want to flavor it, is that if you were to... I'm trying to flavor it in a way that doesn't give it away tremendously. If you recall the, on the episode of Voyager where they had the Omega Directive sort of come up, um, Janeway had a design based on another species technology of containing the particles. If you were to contain the particles in a similar fashion and then hit it with a torpedo... That's still going to detonate, and it's still going to cause some destruction of subspace. But it's not going to be on the scale of flowing it into the sun or giving it to the Borg. So the similarity of, like, whenever they're using the residence chamber, and then uh, Seven of Nine kind of sees it go stable? Mm -hmm. That is that what you're referencing? The exact one I'm trying to reference, yes. Uh... So, Captain, we could use the... I, I could modify the deflector array with uh, Commander Tobin and Commander Vassar's help, and uh, we could try to reach the Omega Particles resonance that has been known to somewhat stabilize it, quote-unquote. Um, and then I can send over plans to Commander Williams that would allow us to use a graviton uh, torpedo that would allow the uh, 
impacted area to be a much smaller section of space as opposed to it being you know a star system or mm -hmm. larger do we have to be in close proximity to the detonation with the deflector being used is that a question for me or a question for matt i'm asking Matt. <laughs> okay um I don't see why, which even then what we could do is I could even modify probably a couple, maybe class four or five probes and establish them in a way that they all emit a resonance, champ resonance and then uh, from a distance we could launch a torpedo and then somewhat as and then somewhat to escape to make sure that we do uh cover that we do ensure the destruction of the ship itself um i don't believe we're pressed for time are we <laughs> pressed for time could be you haven't checked in with the lore in a while If we're not pressed with time, we could probably take. I could probably get all this set up within a couple hours and have everything ready to go. But if we are pressed for time, um, we could probably have the QSD warmed up and ready to go. And then, as soon as we get the uh, get the torpedo sense off, we jump to QSD and hope we didn't fuck up. All right. I mean, do we know how large of an area of subspace is going to be affected by this smaller explosion? Computer, how much? 2 AU. Whoa. That's not a lot, is it? That's not a lot. On a cosmic Whoa. scale, no. Uh, it's Isn't that as big as V'ger? Uh, 2 AU I think is so. the distance is the diameter of Earth's orbit around the sun. Two AU is. So you just, yeah. we just if we just do it next to the sun, then you basically can't get within Earth's distance of the sun. All it right. also means the board will be unable to pass through that space of warp as well. I mean, I thought I thought one AU was the difference between the Earth and the sun. Yeah, it's that's one AU. Radius. That's the that's the Earth and the sun. So that's twice that. Yeah, that's twice, the radius. Yeah, twice three. Oh yeah, three. We had discussed using a transphasic torpedo to attempt to um, s essentially neutralize the, uh, the omega particles. If we employed one of those, might that actually be able to lessen the amount of subspace that is destabilized by the explosion? Maybe if there was some way to feed real-time sensor data from the probes to the torpedo and adjust the, the frequency. Although. Because the issue is, is that once the transphasic torpedo would hit the uh, the ore that basically is ma that basically makes the up of the uh, omega particle, um, the resulting explosion does hit it at several phases of uh, its existence, so to speak. Um, which that's a long, complicated. But the thing is, though, is that on that explosion, it'll take parts of the omega particle out of phase, put parts of it into phase to where it may result in it becoming incredibly destabilized within the makeshift resonance chamber that we create with the probes. So it could make it a lot better, where it only goes down to, like, an AU and a half to an AU, it could make it a lot worse. Continue what you're saying, but I'm going to whisper Dag something on Discord. Continue with your conversation. What if... Um, so how many trans-basic torpedoes do we have? We have two. We have two. How many probes do we need to... Would we need Matic to contain the uh... particles? How large is the sh how large is the uh size Dolphin of an Oval class? 
So it's scale three. Nova class. I would say probably one to each one to each uh, side, then one four and aft. So that'd be four, five, six. Create a small resonance esque chamber that just allow it to somewhat cascade itself into resonance, but at the same time allow the uh, allow for not as much issues is the best way to put it what if we put the torpedoes aboard the ship and detonated them at the same time try to implode it yeah it's like getting too i mean crazy in theory, which this is probably a hell of a worse of an idea, but I mean, it's still a theory. Using both the transphasic torpedoes along with probably two to three uh, gravi- gravitonial uh, torpedoes, if we put the ship into the sun and then allow the torpedoes to detonate simultaneously as the omega particle does uh, destabilize itself, we could create a small-ish singularity effect. It would keep everything somewhat contained, but I would highly suggest not being in the area for a while. It's just a mini black hole. You know, just your your average mini black hole that powers Romulan ships, you know. Yeah, basically. Would it be possible to also use your invention, the um, chronometric sensors, to essentially calibrate the torpedo as it is in flight in order to adapt to the changing variance of the Omega explosion? We could actually predict the series of stabilizations and destabilizations ahead of time and or calibrate the torpedo right before it impacts. In all honesty, out of everyone sitting at this table, the only person I would trust to do that would be Lieutenant Commander Vassar, just because the speed of which I know the Omega Particle to stabilize and destabilize, and then the speed of just the incredible speed of which everything is happening, we would literally need somebody who is tied into the computer who could work at the computer speeds. If that is something Vassar is up to, while I appreciate the call out, I have my own suggestion. If we were to obtain a transwarp coil, we would be able to bring the Boronite ship into a transwarp conduit, detonate it, and that would prevent the board from being able to return to DSD. Collapse the passage. We would also need the Nalor to be very close to us to maintain our the field behind us. Where are we going to get a transwarp coil? There's a Unimatrix a day's ride from here. Just because I find it funny, you all look out the window at the debris field of the sphere you blew up <laughs> earlier, <laughs> and it just slowly drifts that's, into frame. That's what I was saying, is are we... <laughs> is there a coil out the window right now? Like, is that... That's what I thought we talked about last time, or someone uh, mentioned before, was like... Well, we blew the ship up. Let's see what we can find in the debris to help. Yeah, that's what I said. But then everyone's like, no, because you're going to bring on Borg stuff. Well, you can't do that, but you can help us. You're not going to put our former crewmate's head on a Borg body. It's just not going to (laughs) happen. Why not? (laughs) One word. Uh, Nanites. Medic to uh, transporter chief. There, sorry, I'm muted. Uh, you've reached Jensen, sir. How can I help you? <laughs> sir? Do I just... How are you feeling today, Jensen? Uh, good. 
How? Scale of one to ten. Maybe a six. I kind of wanted to say, should I not be feeling well? Yeah, that's kind of where he's going with this. He's like, sir, should I should I be yeah. worried? Should that number be now lower? that you mention it? <laughs> no, no, you're you're fine, Jensen. You're in in all actuality, you're a perfect fucking ten. <laughs> sir, I normally am the one that comes just, to other people just, with my problems. Just, are are just, you okay? Just, Yes. Should I send uh, the, the, the doctor up to you? There's a doctor sitting right here in this room. Do a scan. Hold on. Of the Is it board Tobin? Di- Is it Lieutenant Commander Tobin? <laughs> no. Because if it was, I wanted you to tell him that I've downloaded every single Bajoran book about the prophets, and I am reading through them at this very moment. Jensen, can you please get with the science lab? Uh, okay, which science do lab? A, do a sensor sweep of the Borg debris mm-hmm. and find me a transwarp coil that isn't in utter pieces. Uh, one moment, sir. And then, Williams, why don't we have you roll for Jensen? Jensen's oh. going to roll a reason, reason security on this one. And uh, if someone wants to grab the Fenrir, the Fenrir will be rolling a uh, sensors and a security. Actually, let's make it a sensors engineering for the ship. And the difficulty on this is going to be a three, so you might want to spend some momentum. Uh, Yeah, I'll spend... Ooh, very nice. Two successes already from the Fenrir. I'll spend... Screw it. I'll spend three points to get uh, an extra two dice. Okay. Uh, How much do we have? Do we any have four, of, do any of Jensen's? No um, do any of Jensen's focus supply, quantum slipstream technology, power supplies, or antimatter technology? No, but you are activating him, so you can give him a new focus. Being competent. <laughs> <laughs> Bajoran religion. Good job. Yeah, religion. Right there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, let's activate him and give him the focus of. Okay, I'm gonna argue. For, I'm gonna argue something real quick. Okay. Quantum slipstream technology is based off of board transwarp coils, so wouldn't that focus apply? No, because they're entirely separate technologies. I knew you were gonna ask this eventually. They are entirely different. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the focus of transwarp theory. Works for me. All right, Jensen, bring it home. Show us those successes. In before all zeros. Actually, we would want zeros. That's good. Oh no, we want. Okay, so that is a total of four successes, four. which brings you up to two momentum. So uh, Jensen does his scan and says, uh, "I I found some, sir." How many do you need? One, two? How many did you find? Three. Just bring all three of them aboard. So put um, them in engine. Put them. I, it, that's the sticky part, sir. We can't get a transporter lock on them from here. Um, we, we need to send someone over, an away team over, to put transporter enhancers on them. Congratulations, Jensen. You just volunteered. <laughs> sir, I'm suddenly feeling like a two. <laughs> what about worker bees? Would we be able to take a shuttle? That's what I was considering. Was shouldn't, shouldn't we be able to just take a shuttle and just tractor beam them over, or even open up a cargo bay and then just kind of worker bee them in? How so, big are tra- transport coils? Aren't that big? They're not that big. But what Jensen is about to tell you, I'm going to say out of character because it'll make more sense if I explain it out of character. Um, what Jensen says is that the transwarp coils are in intact portions of the sphere remains, Aww. meaning that you would have to literally go into those sections and extricate the coil or slap a transport enhancer on it and then beam it out. Jensen, can you please scan to ensure that there are no active Borg in the areas where the transwarp coils are? Sir, I can confirm that there are many active Borg near the transwarp coil. This just gets better and better. Is that the captain? Is she mad at me? Because I'll go down to a one. 
You're doing fine. She almost she almost gave you a medal earlier, okay? Just you tell him that. <laughs> Why are you telling him that? We need him happy right now. Okay? We need him. We need him which... smiley, and we need him at a ten. <laughs> the, the the section with the least amount of board. Uh, of, of course, the safest sir. section to go to. Are those sections which section captured is that? with atmosphere? Those sections do have atmosphere. Yes. I uh, I've got one, sir. It looks like there's maybe about ten active Borg, and maybe about six or seven more in alcoves, but. Uh, Looks like the best bet, given those conditions. Okay. Once we have this, can we just fly? Can we just go home? Well, that's the thing I was considering was we have one to destroy the... Uh, we'd use one of the transwarp coils to destroy the ship in the transwarp uh, corridor. And then if we're able to outfit our own ship and the Nalore with the other two then we wouldn't really have to rely on each other. And All we right. would also, you know, right. get, bring stuff back for Starfleet. Right. So we're fighting We're fighting Borg. We're going to go do this. All right. What is the yeah. location of the Nalor at this time? Uh, they are at the they Unimatrix. They should be at the Unimatrix. Do we need to send a message to them? We probably yeah. should. Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. Jensen, get the uh, get me three transport enhancers ready to uh, take away teams over, so we can capture some transwarp coils. Uh, right away, sir. Uh, should I upgrade or downgrade my number? Uh, <laughs> I would suggest getting with our wonderful uh, Lieutenant Commander Lee Tobin and uh, praying <laughs> your fucking ass off. Medic out. Off screen before we come back to the senior staff, and we see a flummox Jensen just looking at his console and going, "But I, I don't have the earring yet. I sh wait. There's hologram. We, we could computer display Bajoran traditional earring left ear, and it appears on his ear. Oh my god, that's so cute. And then Jensen scurries off to do Jensen things. <laughs> Um, okay. Williams? Captain. We're going to do this one at a time. I don't think we have enough people to safely send three away teams over. Do we have lo a location of them, like a schematic of you do. where they're at? Okay. Are they fairly close together? They are not. Okay. Of not. Why would they be? Well, in that case... I don't think we have enough uh, people in the game to <laughs> RP three away mission, three away parties. So um, we're just going to have to do it one at a time. If I may, given that the Borg Sphere was able to transport both itself and the lore and the Fenrir, we may only need one transwarp conduit. We can collapse the transwarp well, conduit itself after us. So it would be dangerous, obviously. We'd have to ride the shockwave through the rest of the portal. But it's conceivably possible to complete this entire mission and get both ships home with just one transport conduit. Where are that we, galaxy-wise? You are in the Delta Quadrant. Deep, deep in the Delta Quadrant. Okay. I think um, all we need to get is the one. There was the one in the best spot, so let's let's start there. Okay. Then my question is, GM, is who's going on this away mission? I'll take a Rast will volunteer. Matic will go. Okay, got Rast, got Matic. Williams is going to go as well. Figured Williams was coming along. Um, I will volunteer as well. Makes sense. Can assimilate a hologram. Okay. And assimilate the emitter. Matic, promise me if they get me, you'll destroy my emitter. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> they'll make improvements. Rude. Do you want to fight holographic Borg? If they if they get me, make sure you clear my holodeck history. <laughs> <laughs> I have already seen it, and it is not pretty. Um. So since we're in combat, I'll have a little go. 
Okay. And then I Good think the only one that's missing is Mr. Lovecraft. Who are you taking? Uh, I will take Cartwright. Cartwright. Cartwright? Who is this? I haven't, I haven't looked at him. I believe he is your uh, Hydran, right? Yes. Very interesting Mind character. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah. So, uh, it's a pretty face. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite a thing. In fact, I, I think it's worth talking about. Um, so as uh, the meeting adjourns and uh, you begin heading to transporter rooms, uh, meeting you in the transporter room is Alel, uh, but also a very interesting looking alien that uh, most of you have maybe seen in the corridors a few times. But uh, until now, he hasn't really been or she or they, whatever they identify as. Uh, they haven't really been at the uh, forefront of your duty reports. So so tell us a little bit about Cartwright there, Lovecraftian. Tell us a little bit about their appearance and, uh, well, their species. Because they are not standard. Uh, well, Lieutenant Cartwright walks into the room and um, it's immediately evident that he is completely dissimilar from any of the other species on board the ship. His skin is a deep sort of blue merging with purple in various different locations. And he has this sort of strange sinew that runs across his entire body. Most of it is concealed by a heavily modified Starfleet uniform, but um, he has an ungainly strange gait. And you realize what you have seen in the past, that he is actually a triped. He has two legs that stick out at the sides at odd angles because his hips have sort of been displaced or moved backwards from the standard humanoid biped. And he has one leg emerging from uh, behind him and he sort of waddles in. He's incredibly squat, but almost as wide as he is tall. So he's only about five, seven, but um, he's incredibly thickly built. He has long clawed fingers and an elongated face that is tipped with almost like the mandibles of an insect, these large, um, almost talon-like fangs that open and close like pincers. Around his mouth is a kind of uh, transparent aluminum shell or shield that arcs upwards into a mechanical device that encircles a strange flesh-like fringe uh, at the top of his head. And he has three eyes uh, that are yellow. They're on short stalks, and the third of which emerges from the middle of his forehead. Um, he walks up towards Commander Rast, and um, he opens his mouth and a sound emerges from it, kind of like a cross between metal shearing and the tone of a dial-up internet connection. <laughs> Start back and he takes a large, thick, clawed hand and jams at the mechanical device uh, alongside his skull, <clears throat> clears his throat and then <laughs> speaks. Oh, frightfully sorry about that, sir. I'm afraid that uh, my universal translator interacts poorly with the uh, particulate matter and combination of gases that I require to respire in your environment. <clears throat> Terribly sorry about that, Commander. Uh, Lieutenant Cartwright, at your service, sir. You could have Ooh. two momentum for that. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's fucking beautiful. <laughs> oh my god, it's fantastic. <laughs> This is going to be so good. All right. So with that happening, you step into the transporter pad and you beam away. And when you rematerialize, oh, wait, before we go, are you spending momentum for anything special like phaser rifles? I want a phaser rifle. I want yes. phaser rifles. Okay. So just so you know, phaser rifles are opportunity one, escalation two, which means I do get two threat. But the good news is that it's one spend for the entire away team. So everybody gets a phaser rifle. Saddle up. You do get a phaser a rifle. Kit. And you get a phaser rifle. Uh, actually, is that Alel. Standard? Yeah, Alel gets it standard, and Matic gets an engineering standard. If I might suggest, we may also wish to take melee weapons. Yeah, I was about to say um, Matic will arrive and he will have. Uh... If anyone is familiar with them, the, uh, oh, what fucking race is, uh, <laughs> Vassar's Hel Hellstrom. Hystrom. Hystrom is the Serto Draco. Mm -hmm. I want, yes. 
uh, it, how long the Cerdo Draco, so it's basically like medieval long swords kind of, but mm-hmm. badass. And he kind of has one for everybody. He's like, all right, if you want one, take one. I suggest using it. I will say that that's going to be an opportunity one. Uh, we'll call it uh, opportunity one, escalation one. So I will also get one threat. But as I'm quickly trying to find the weapons table, it will be the same as a batleth. And a batleth is considered a three vicious one weapon. So three challenge dice base adds your security, and then it also has vicious one on it. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna take an actual batleth. Okay. <laughs> so it's war trophy. What's the what's the actual weapon in the table? Uh, the actual uh, table is a batleth. It is a heavy blade, so you could do a batleth, a lerpa. A ah, love Lurpus. Really, any heavy blade would work. You have if if somebody uses a Lurpa, they've got to, they've got to put the you got to put the music from a muck time on in the background. I think I could find that during the break. Yes. Um, I wouldn't think Alel even really knows how to use a battle. I mean, that's fair. I mean, if Alel wouldn't bring such a heavy weapon, that's fair. But would you still um, like a, a sword or something? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So she likes to study earth culture. So she'll bring like a katana. A that. katana. She has studied the blade many years. Yeah. She like has it, but she hasn't trained with it as much as she probably should. But it's there. I guess we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. She follows the, the sword logic again. Uh, the quality on a sword on a heavy blade is three challenge dice base, with a damage rating, uh, or sorry, a damage effect of vicious one, which, as a reminder, means that every single effect rolled is an additional uh, a point of damage. And if you want to take something that isn't a heavy blade, so like a a katana. That would be two challenge dice, vicious one. So just one less. You know how there's like that retractable one in Star Trek 2009? Sort of, yes. Not like that. If you want one. I don't like that personally, but um, I just wanted to point that out. That that's in canon. Well, maybe not our canon, but... We play fast and loose with canon. I mean, how many times have we blown up the Temporal Prime Directive? I mean, every session so far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so everybody's got their weapon of choice, yes? Yeah. All right. So we are going to cut to you all materializing within the Borg infrastructure, or what remains of it anyway. Now, for anyone who's not familiar with Borg infrastructure, imagine what is essentially a beehive, a technological beehive, And the corridors, such as they are, are very dimly lit. And every, pretty much interspersed throughout these corridors are alcoves set into the wall. And in those alcoves are Borg drones. Uh, They are regenerating or otherwise repairing. And the atmosphere is smoggy. Uh, It has poor visibility. And it's very muggy, very hot. And you can actually look uh, behind you as you take kind of come down to your senses. You look around. If you look just at the right angle, you can actually see a literal space that is being held back by uh, force fields that is more or less keeping in the atmosphere that is sustaining not just the Borg drones, but now you all. And as you, again, sort of come to check your, your person, make sure you came with everything, Um, One of the Borg drones activates and begins heading in your direction. What would you all like to do? Um, Don't engage. Step out of its way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart move, because what the Borg drone does, as long as you do not impede its progress, it simply walks past you and continues on to another part of the corridor. Um. GM, can I use my tricorder to scan to see if the bits of Borg Sphere are attempting to regenerate? You certainly may. That would be a reason security difficulty of one. And 
Security. 2d20. No applicable focus. All right, two successes, which means you get a point Ooh. of momentum. They are regenerating quite rapidly, in fact. Uh, you're not a Borg expert per se, but based on what your tricorder is reporting, give them a week, they'll probably have reassembled the sphere. And Maddox, we should be at five momentum right now. No. Yeah, we got two from the intro of the character, plus that one that we just got there. And then each opportunity cost weapon is one momentum. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 Didn't we get two for Lee Tobin? We, so we had, stuff? so we had, so the two that we got from Lee Tobin stuff, uh, one was one was spent for the opportunity one to get the uh, phaser rifles. Mm -hmm. The other blades. one was for the blades. Yep. Okay. So okay. now we're up to three. Um, but yeah, I will share my tricorder data with uh, commanders. Rast, Matic, Vassar, and Lieutenants LL and Cartwright. Uh, so they look to be pretty busy right now. Maybe the best opportunity we have. As you say, sir, quite right. I would agree. Let's get toward get toward our uh, objective and get out of here as quickly as possible. What direction? Well, to answer that, we're going to go to Mr. Vassar. So, Mr. Vassar, if you would kindly roll me a reason science. Also, I'm loving... Thank I you. just noticed it myself. His tactical visor. His tactical visor. I love it. Uh, if you want to roll me a reason science, uh, you would have a focus here. And the difficulty on this is going to be a two. It's both logical and stylish. And in fact, with his tactical visor helping him, he gets three successes. So that's another point of momentum. <laughs> you know what it is. That way. If you would proceed in this direction, I will be able to secure the transwarp conduit. Mm. All right. So something I'm going to ask of everyone as you're proceeding through this uh, space uh, is, again, there are board drones activating and deactivating, going in <clears> and out of those alcoves, seemingly at random, but... Clearly, they're acting on some sort of higher intelligence, or so they like to claim. So what I'm going to require from everyone is a fitness security at a difficulty of one. And you can't assist anyone on this, but I need a fitness security from everyone. And you could probably guess what happens if you fail this roll. You bump into them and they get angry. All right. Can I spend our spend two momentum to create an advantage, possibly? Okay, what would this advantage be? Um, knowing we were going over to the Borg Sphere, uh, Matic would have gotten with Savia, who spent most of her time in the uh, Mirror Universe with Borg, mm -hmm. um, and created some sort of dead or like a a vaccine of sorts against the nanotechnology mm -hmm. to kind of, if they do get picked up on sensors, it shows them as Borg, but not, but they don't turn into Borg, if that makes any sense. I, I think I know where you're going with that. Um, I will say that if you spend that advantage... What I will say is that if anyone rolls a complication, we will ignore that complication. So Vassar has already rolled. He's gotten the one success he needs, so he's fine. Uh, you said um, fitness security? Fitness security. What Wouldn't... about prosthetics and cybernetics? Uh, it's a Matic bullshit. I'll allow it. <laughs> Daily combat? <laughs> Say again? Melee combat? Melee minutes. combat? Not quite yet. Okay. Um, um, espionage. I will give you espionage. Oh, of course! Oh, Score no, right for no, me! No. Mm. Good thing I made that advantage. All right, yeah. so William's got two, uh, Rast got two, so you're up two momentum. The uh, boy however, just can't dodge. Yeah. You can't dodge for it. So everybody passed except Cartwright. <laughs> And oh. Cartwright, if you didn't get that, if Matic hadn't spent that momentum to make the advantage, that was going to be a complication. 
So what happens is Cartwright, as the away team is proceeding down the corridor, uh, sort of through the haze, you maybe, you know, start to comb it away or do one of those, uh, I hate to call it human things, where you try to, you know, see a little bit better by getting rid of the gas around you. And in the process, you accidentally swing your arm too far and you touch one of the drones that is in an alcove. And it immediately jolts out, the arm jolts out, and grabs onto yours. Oh, uh, I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, I don't suppose you accept uh, my apology. Uh, I, I will try to uh, reach towards its fingers and pry it off my hand. Okay, uh, this is going to be a daring security, and it will be an opposed roll. Okay. Now does melee combat come yes, into play? Yes, now it comes into, well, okay. into, into play. The good news is you only need to roll two successes on this one. Would anyone mind if I bought a die here? Burn, no, burn go it. ahead. Please burn, burn do. It. I want more of Cartwright, so um, if you can't be assimilated. Yeah. Just and... don't be like me and kill your supporting character on the very first episode. Oh, hey. Hey, two successes. So yeah, Cartwright, you're able to break yourself free. <laughs> Does the Borg show sign of trying to re-engage? Uh, no. As soon as uh, the fingers are pried away from Cartwright's arm, it just sort of goes back to its side and okay. sits there in its alcove. Okay. Yeah. Much obliged, I suppose. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, sorry about that, uh, Commander. Uh, I'm on my way. <clears throat> I would like to scan Rast is just Cartwright. like shaking his head. Uh, you wanted to scan something a lot? I want to scan Cartwright for nanites. Okay. Uh, reason medicine, difficulty of one. Thank you. Uh, prosthetics and cybernetics? It would indeed, yes. And this <laughs> also counts as an activation, so you can give her an additional focus, a value, a talent. Okay. Two successes. Two. So uh, he's clean. He's good. Okay, she's gonna do the scan and then say close one, and then pat him somewhere on what would seem to be a shoulder. Be more <laughs> careful next time. Oh, certainly, madam. Thank you very much for the assistance. Sure. Let's go. All right. So you continue on after the brief excitement has passed. You continue on down the corridor and you arrive in what is essentially a nexus. So it is a circular room that branches off into eight different paths. Uh, an eight-sided star, if you will. And uh, in the middle of this space is a raised pedestal. And floating above the pedestal is a series of interlocking rings that are just sort of slowly tumbling and twirling within one another. And when you start, you know, start to scan it, or maybe you throw something at it, you know, the smart thing to do. Um, you realize that there is a force field that is surrounding uh, this thing. And you're pretty sure that the interlocking rings that are floating are the actual transwarp coil you are after. Now, the good news is there also <clears throat> are not any Borg drones currently in this space. Yeah, but as soon as we start Whoa, to that's screw that's with this... this but as soon as we start to screw with this force field, you can bet they're going to start mm -hmm. piling in here. I have two recommendations. One, we create a distraction while we work to disrupt the power in this area. And two, we create a distraction while we work to disrupt the power in this area. Well, sorry, was that a joke? I have been working on my humor subroutine. Good timing. Well, if you're the hologram, then you can just appear and then leave and then appear and then leave. So you should create the distraction. Uh, if there were mobile emitters supporting that, I would be able to do so. However, just take like... it off, throw it. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm not so sure it works that way, but carry it... on. Okay. Worth a shot. Oh, I mean, one of us could throw it. 
Yeah, I was going to say, what if you could throw it? Like, you could go, going long, beep it, you can't, and throw. You can't deactivate yourself? Maddox, Maddox suddenly comes up with a thing of logic. All right, we're going to choose an order. Who gets to throw uh, Vassar? I would appreciate this as a backup plan. <laughs> backup plan, primary plan. I mean, I already got the lots. Williams, are you uh, are you ready to uh, defend our group as they are... Uh extracting the coils I think I can manage commander you and I can handle it everyone else get that coil out as quickly as you can uh Vassar are you able what would be what would happen if you were to interface with the pedestal and attempt to just deactivate the force field uh, assuming the interface was successful and undetected, I would be able to locate the power source and shut it down. However, I have never interfaced Borg system before, and I am not familiar with their, shall we say, intrusion protocols. Okay. Um, <laughs> we could, however, use our weapons to disrupt the power supplies coming in and out through the conduits attached to the area. Speaking of our weapons, um, GM, mm -hmm. you, are we able to get an approximation of how many shots we'll be able to get off before the board begin to adapt? Uh... I thought following Wolf 359, it was standard issue for all phaser rifles to automatically rotate uh, frequencies. They do, yes. Um, but in a mechanics thing, what I can say is that every time you shoot them with an energy weapon, I get to roll something. Okay. So everybody switch to melee. I think melee first is good option. Well, just remember, uh, when it's a melee roll... If you do not beat them, they get an attack on you. So that's Just sort of the, you. that's sort of the the trade off here. Oh, okay, okay. Make your shots count. <sighs> Let's go RNG. <laughs> um. So I tell you what, we've been going for an hour. Why don't we take our quick ten? Well, I say quick. Let's take our ten minute break. Use the restroom. Get ready for some combat. And we will be back in 10, so see you in a bit stream.
definitely tack the kind of gig. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to bring Jensen in the next time we raid a Borg. Borg whatever. We'll just bring Jensen next time. But yes, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, during the break, I hastily sketched a map that was better than the theater of the mind I was going to run. So as you can tell, uh, in the middle, there is that sort of circular pedestal, which has the levitated transwarp coil that my players are currently attempting to steal from the Borg. And spiraling out from this pedestal are eight corridors, which, as a certain Williams put it, are just way more ways the board can come at you. Uh, but at the moment, uh, none of you have caused the board to really care that you're here. So what would you like to do? How many power conduits are there leading to the pedestal feeding the force field? Uh, there is at least one per uh, spoke of this wheel, if you'll imagine it like a wheel. And some have multiple. Uh, in all, there are a total of 17. Mm. Uh, yes. Are there any larger? I believe I can use my neural interface to uplink with the cube and shut down the force field sphere. Okay. Do you believe that by shutting that down, there would be any lasting? Of, there would be any effects to the current atmosphere or force fields that are holding up the that are holding in the atmosphere. That depends on what security procedures the Borg have around uh, specially requested shutdowns of their force fields. <laughs> Mechanically, what I would say is that if you attempt the hack, uh, the complication range will increase, and the complication will be uh, if the you know if you roll more than one complication, you will lose. Well, the atmosphere will be exiting at a very rapid pace. I'll put it that way. So Vasar still won't care because you know hologram, but the rest of you might care just a little bit. What's like the time it's going to take us to do this without? Just hurry with just hurrying through it. We may wish to set up the transport enhancers before attempting this procedure and have an open comm line with the ship. Should atmospheric de decompression occur, we can beam you to safety. Definitely. Okay. So uh, go ahead and ping. Where would you like to set up the three transporter enhancers? Okay, so there'll be one there, one there, and one there. We can move them closer or further, but just kind of set them up in a triangle. And I just realized I'm on the GM layer, so you can't see any of that. Hold on. Oh. There we go. Now they're on the token layer. All right. So, uh, you set up your transport enhancers, and uh, the particularly aware members of your party, maybe Cartwright, maybe Williams, uh, you do hear uh, several Borg drones coming in your direction, but, you know, they're not, like, running, because the Borg don't run. That's not a Borg thing. Uh, they are coming in your direction. They are coming from the southeast. All right. Uh Contacts due southeast. And I'll point for the benefit of those who don't have a good sense of direction and or are aliens. <laughs> yeah, so we do understand the concept of north and south, that, that there's a concept that exists on my planet. Uh, nonetheless, this is probably not the best time to engage in such conversations. Uh, Shut it down, Cartwright. We got work to do. Of, of course, sir. <laughs> Vassar, if you want to go ahead and uh, interlink, I'll attach my tricorder to your emitter, and uh, I'll monitor your progress. Okay. Uh, if the safety go off above 30%, uh, this is the manual switch to shut me down before they hack the emitter. All right. Here goes nothing. All right. So this is going to be an extended task. Uh, I don't have a fancy graphic for this, so I'm quickly typing it out in chat. Um, but basically, uh, this extended task is going to start at a difficulty of four. It's going to have a work track of 14, and it will have a resistance of two, which means that uh, 
you're either going to need to spend momentum to get rid of that resistance, or you're just going to have to roll really, really well on your uh, your rolls. Are there any objections to me spending momentum? No. Absolutely not. So this is going to be, uh, for you, this is going to be either a daring engineering or a daring security. And with your new focus, it would most definitely apply. Can I assist seeing as I'm overwatching the whole thing? I would say if you were to assist him, the complication range would increase by one. And I'm going to spend some threat here to make the initial complication range before you decide whether you're assisting or not in 18 <coughs> to 20. We'll go with daring engineering. Okay. And a lot of crossed fingers. Um, if I'm spending momentum, I'm getting two additional dice. Okay, that uh, you have two at the moment, so you would have to give me one threat and two momentum. Go for it. Do it. Uh, okay, so one threat and two momentum for and four do you dice. Have, for four do dice. you have a value that applies? Maybe spend uh, determination? Uh, I have a value that every problem has a solution. Uh, that would most definitely apply. So if I'd, say, you, I'd say use it. Yeah, so if you used it, uh, you could take back that threat and you would just spend the two momentum and you would be rolling three dice. But you would start with two free successes. I will spend the determination. Okay. So, Matic, and... are you going to assist him or no? Um, my talents don't help out right wait let's... they do not yeah. all right so uh complication here. yeah i'm looking at a complication but a grand total of five successes so you do get a momentum but there is a complication on the field we'll resolve that in a moment uh go ahead and roll me six challenge dice now visar and this will represent the work done Okay, I've never rolled challenge dice before, so let's have a tech session. Okay. Uh, if you are aware of where the macros are, uh, they are under the collection tab in Roll20. It looks like a bulleted list. Okay. And then you should see a menu that says macros. And then there should be a few things that say like challenge dice, techno babble, system hit. Uh, you want to check the box that says in bar. And then below those, there should be another checkbox that says show macro quick bar. And then you want to check that. And then below all of our names in roll 20 back on the map view, there should be a challenge dice button for you to push. I am inputting a number of dice. Six? Six. Okay. So that good is roll. seven success. It's a very good roll. Uh, that is seven work done. Now, because it has resistance of two, that brings it down to a five. However, you have achieved a breakthrough, which will lower the difficulty. So I'll go ahead and update that. And as I'm updating it, uh, you know, you... Using your neural interface, you begin to sort of reach out. And I hate to say reach out with your mind, but it seems apt. You reach out with your mind and make contact with the Borg security systems uh, in this area. And though they are alien, though they are sort of unknown in their greatness to you, what you are able to do is begin to make sense of them. And you begin the arduous process of narrowing down what conduits are running where, how do you disable this force, force field without setting off alarms, things of that nature. Um, however, with the complication on the field, uh, those board drones that are coming down the hallway, they are immediately going to almost illuminate, like fully come into being. Like before, they were just walking around. They weren't really caring uh, where you guys were. But now they are definitely, like, their ocular implants are definitely tracking those that they can see. So I'm going to offer, uh, before I throw you an initiative order, if you all want to be in any specific location on this map, please move yourselves now.
I feel like we should still watch the other corridors. Like, what's the line of sight? Uh, you can here? see uh, what this map doesn't show is that these corridors break out uh, further into Y corridors, uh, more or less about where the drawing stops. So you've got a visibility of, let's say, about 30, 40 feet. So Alel could see... Oh, you mean Southeast. across the middle. So yeah. across the middle, you can see just fine. Just remember, though, that that circle in the middle is a force field at the moment. Okay, so we got one, two, three up there. <laughs> well, I'm just going to go right here. Ooh. Towards the danger. Well, they're, they could get hurt. So... That's Fair. her logic. Fair. And she has a weapon. So, All right. So we are going to go into actual initiative order. Now, fun fact, uh, normally the way things work is each Borg drone would get a turn. But uh, let's, let's be honest here. They're Borg. So every single turn you guys act, the Borg drones get a turn. So just keep that in mind. So it is the player's turn first. Which among you would like to act first? Now, that can simply be Vassar continuing to do his work, but it can also be someone firing a phaser, chopping up Borg arms, etc., etc. If Vassar does his work and gets some done, we could do... Williams, don't you have quick to action? Sure do. And then we could move into having Cartwright or Rest set up as ready action to whatever the Borg get close enough they just automatically hit should the board prove hostile two birds one stone yep I think that sounds good to me okay so it sounds like Vassar sounds like uh, you're going to be rolling another daring in engineering this time the difficulty is only a three and go ahead and use that one momentum. And that gives me another dice? Yes. Mm -hmm. Matic may want to assist this time. I don't know. How confident you feeling, Dag? <laughs> Cybersecurity focus still valid? Mm hmm. Um, I'm fairly confident. I suppose I can't use another determination. <laughs> yeah, that is sort of the downside is you would have to challenge a value to use your determination at this point. Understood. Uh, I'll be rolling. All right. So oh, that is I not a complication, it. but that is four successes. So you get your one momentum right back. Go ahead and roll me the six challenge die. So that is five. Uh, what you could do with your momentum or threat, uh, you can give me one momentum to reroll those zeros. Uh, you could give me a momentum to ignore two points of resistance. Uh, you can also use a momentum to add one, like one static point. So one momentum for one additional work. Uh. I would say reroll the zeros or or uh, resist the two. Either way, you get the breakthrough. I will uh, cancel. Yeah, reroll the, the zeros. Cancel the resistance. Okay. okay. You can still do both. Like you can you can still do both things, but you would have to give me one threat in because you only have the one momentum at the moment. I think we're okay for now. Okay. I'll cancel the resistance. Okay. Um, so good. Good. Nice yeah. job. Um, so that so lowers I, difficulty to two. The, okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm already updating it. So, Vassar, you push past your earlier trespass where you maybe tripped a minor alarm. Nothing super serious, uh, but something enough that it probably has heightened the Borg security level in this area. Um, now, I have good news and I have bad news. And <clears throat> I've got this threat sitting here. So, you try to disable the alarm. And in the process, uh, Matic, uh, a tubule from the ceiling begins jetting hot air, hot steam right into your face. 
And I need you to roll me a fitness and a security, please. Difficulty of two. And I'm also going to be spending some threat to reduce the amount of work you've done. So you originally were going to have a total of 10 work, but you now only have a total of 7 work done. Basically, this is to keep you from just completing the work track and winning outright kind of a thing. What's the uh, difficult? You said there was two difficulty for me? Two difficulty, yes. Don't have a focus unless I want to try to bullshit. No. <laughs> hey, All right. you're, two successes. you're not bullshitting? Damn. So instead of taking six challenge die worth of damage, you're only taking three. So you're going to be taking three stress damage, Matic, as the steam bellows into your face and causes you to reel back and get out of the steam. You know, you don't want to stand underneath what is essentially a hot shower, uh, to put it lightly. Um, but as you step out of it, you are completely free of the effect. And this conduit that has dropped from the ceiling uh, just keeps spraying the hot steam everywhere. Um, but as long as none of you don't directly step into it, you don't have to worry about it. So you have disabled several conduits, Vassar, leading into this force field. Um, it's just that this one has decided to drop from the ceiling and so forth. Um, but with that being Vassar's turn, we now go to the Borg drone's turn. And um, oh, go ahead, quick to action, sorry, maybe. Action. Yeah, quick to action. So during the first round of combat, so any of any of you other guys can can ignore the the normal cost to retain the initiative, and and one of you can go again. So if Matt, I mean, I know we want to get this done. Um, is there a way that Matic could try to? boost Vassar or even seeing what Vassar is working on um, join in on the extended task and aid him in getting past everything to ensure that uh, this is we're able to disable this force field and get everything beamed out and ready to go I would say yes uh, you could attempt your own daring engineering uh, the complication range would increase to a 17 to 20 though Okay. Do it. Do it. And I am rolling for the extended task, right? Mm hmm. Okay. So, daring engineering. Uh, alien technology or power systems. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is just the best blanket. Um, I'm going to spend a determination on nothing better than practical experience. Okay. Uh, so then that gives me two successes already. It's, mm -hmm. So then... All you need to do is not roll complications. Which you did not. You have a grand total of five successes, which gets you uh, three momentum. Okay, and then... How many challenges is it? Six? Uh, it is two plus your engineering, so seven. Seven for me. How much does... Seven. Okay. Um, okay, so... <laughs> this is why he does... This is why he doesn't like me doing extended tasks. Uh, <laughs> I score one additional work for every mm -hmm. effect rolled. So mm -hmm. that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten work. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I use engineering on an extended task, if you achieve a breakthrough and roll at least one effect on a challenge dice, you achieve a second breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So with after resistance, that's eight work and two breakthroughs. Which is enough to complete the work track, and yep, that's two breakthroughs. So, uh, Matic, you see what Vassar is doing, and you are able to chip in. And sure enough, after a few more moments, the force field drops very noticeably, and now you are simply confronted with the smaller pedestal inside, which I'm trying to grab and get it. It's not dragging properly. I'll just draw a new one. Uh, but the pedestal with the transwarp coil uh, is now supposedly right in front of you. 
Um, however, the moment this happens, alarms begin sounding like a, a board klaxon uh, begins sounding. And I'm going to be spending some threat to do this, but from every single spoke, at least one board drone has appeared. Um, GM, did we do that whole thing that we said we were going to do where we would have the an open comm link with the ship and they would be ready to beam <laughs> us out? Yes. Okay, good. No, just wondering. Just wondering. Now, that's, uh, that's what uh, happens on Maddox's turn. On the Borg's turn, the Borg... Uh, yes? Keep the initiative for Can't. You've the... already used no. quick action. Can't do it again. <laughs> so the Borg drone is... Uh, let's see, which one of these Borg drones do I want to have act? Mm. I know. We'll have this one act. So Rast, uh, the Borg drone coming down the southeast corridor is going to not run, but in a very imposing and intimidating way, come up to you and attempt to tubule you in the neck. I'm assuming you don't want that to happen. I am going to, uh, I'm going to uh, respond by, uh, I guess I can, it's just, uh, so ha ah, sorry. So <laughs> in combat, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically, we both rolled a hit. And Correct. the person, okay. All right, so yeah, I will, uh, I will pull out my jackal knife and stab him with that. All right, daring security, difficulty of one, and you need to get at least two successes here. We I'm have four momentum. momentum. Actually, you need three successes here because I know my math. I will use one of those momentum. Okay. And dangerously. It's been that determination. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, I will. I'm going to spend determination as I am a big fan of living. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me that's your actual value. That is the actual value. <laughs> All right. And so... Yeah, so that's seven. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, seven successes, which means you get a grand total of your capped on momentum and you have two floating. Uh, so go ahead and roll me your dagger damage, which I believe is five challenge dice. Okay. Yeah, five challenge dice. And what can I do with floating momentum? Uh, same thing you could do with regular momentum, just that the moment we resolve your action, if you do not use that floating momentum, it goes away. Can it be used to enhance the attack? Yes, yes, it can. All right. In what ways? Uh, you can reroll zeros or really reroll mm -hmm. re-roll any damage dice. Um, okay. You can add a piercing effect. You can ignore resistance, which I'll be helpful and say the Borg have a little bit of resistance. Um, okay. You can also add flat damage. It's one point for one point of damage. Okay. All right. So I will. Uh, take care of the resistance and I'll reroll the two zeros. Okay, how much how much uh, are you spending? Because it's one momentum for two resistance. One momentum then. Okay. And then rerolling. Okay, so that is a grand total of six, seven, eight, nine damage. Uh, so tell me, how how do you like to dispatch this Borg drone? So as the uh, as the drone is coming forward, <clears throat> uh, Rasp pushes himself up against the wall to gain some leverage and then just lunges forward. Uh, the uh, the dagger goes into the neck of the Borg and he slices it to the side and its head kind of just teeters. I like it. And after a few moments of teetering, the Borg drone, like a puppet with its strings getting cut, uh, drops unceremoniously to the floor and just starts twitching. So that's the first Borg drone. The second Borg drone, because... They can do quick to action, too. Uh, <laughs> Williams, you now have one coming from the northeast that is now up in your face. And instead of going for the tubules, it is coming at you with a plasma cutter. So Eat. I need you to roll me a daring security, please. And, and you uh, and Rast will also yell to Williams. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, Williams, uh, you need to get a three here. Daring and security, eh? All right, sounds good. Um, also, Matic, we are capped on momentum. All that uh, momentum spend was uh, floating momentum. Okay, my bad. I didn't know how much I could remember what floating had. Well, that's cool. <clears throat> so I'm going to spend. Um, I'm going to spend some momentum for some extra dice. Uh, you need three do... successes to survive. Mm-hmm. I could probably do that. You know what? I'm going to buy two extra dice. Screw it. Okay. Maybe we'll get some, some momentum back out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Oof. Ooh, that is only two successes. Would you Gross. like to use your determination to reroll? Uh, you know what? Yeah. Only yeah, a we'll plasma use... cutter. The, uh, no, we'll, we'll use the determination to, to reroll those two. Okay. All right, go again. Oh, dear. So you succeed, but there's a complication on the field. So go ahead and roll. Uh, what you decided to take an actual bat lift. Yeah. So you are going to be rolling uh, eight challenge die. And I have the perfect complication in mind. So describe to me how you're dispatching the Borg drone. How are you showing up Rast? Uh, I am going to do the old... Uh, I'm going to do that move that Dak liked to do, which is basically to sidestep them and swing the blade low to scoop the uh, scoop the leg out from under them. And then I'll follow it up with, uh, with Worf's just overhanded chop down the way he, the way he killed Doros that time. Just right into the chest. I like it. I like it. So as you do that, uh, what happens is as they are tripped up and you, they fall and you stab into their chest, uh, what happens is your batleth gets snagged and you are momentarily without your batleth as it tears out of your grip and in the process of rolling, uh, tumbles out of your hand and out of the drone. And I'm just going to draw a quick little X. Your batleth is now at the red X. Cool. But you have killed at least this drone that has been coming at you. Okay. I didn't know a bat lift was a, a missile weapon. <laughs> well, I got him, didn't I? All right. Well, it is now the player's turn. So Cartwright, Rast, Williams, or Lel. All right, I'm going to I'm going to go if everybody's okay with that. Yeah. All right. Uh so I'm just going to say Jack with the batleth, I'm going to pull my phaser rifle. Okay. Uh the Borg drone coming down the north corridor. Okay. Take aim and fire. Okay. That's a control security difficulty of 2. And I have got um yeah, augmented uh, security. So give me a come on. Won't spend any momentum for that. And uh, I guess my do my does my focus for hand phases apply to rifle as well? It does, yeah. Cool. Hey, three successes, which means you get a momentum. And yeah, uh, go plus ahead. The, and... plus, plus the additional success, so that's So it's actually four. uh five momentum <laughs> overall. And a phaser rifle is four plus your security, so nine challenge dice. Uh, and I know I didn't say this beforehand, but could I have used the? Can I use a minor action to um, to aim? Yes, you can. But that would re-roll. That would let you re-roll a dice, unless you have a talent that you're trying to tap here. Oh, I, yeah. no! I thought it would let me re-roll challenge dice if I wanted to. Uh, no, it lets you re-roll Oh, that's dice. right. Never mind. No, we don't want to don't mess with that. But what I will say is if you use your minor action to charge, charge. Yeah. you can add the vicious one effect. Uh, well, let's do that then. Okay. 
So you pull out your phaser rifle, aim it down the corridor, and fire it at the drone, and it impacts center mass, and with a shower of sparks, it falls over backwards dead. Uh, well, maybe not totally dead, as its components continue to whir. Um, but I now have to roll to see if the Borg have adapted. And unfortunately, they have. No! Which means for the rest of the scene, all of your energy weapons are useless. Jeez. No. But of course, you don't know this quite yet. I'm, I'm saying it mostly to help you guys out. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're, we're actually going to find that out now uh, because I've got the fire at will talent. I'm going to mm -hmm. get the uh, swift task momentum spend. Okay. So that's two momentum. Uh, to uh, make another attack. At uh, at the Borg coming down the northwestern corridor. Okay. And because it is a swift task, uh, it is a difficulty of three. Um, actually, with uh, with fire at will, I ignore the difficulty increase for the swift task. Then it's only difficulty two. Hey, right. let's see what we got. I mean, not like it's going to matter anyway, but and, you know, we're playing it out narratively. Plus, you could get momentum. Focus. Hey, you do indeed get momentum. So don't even roll the challenge dice, but as you fire your phaser rifle, um, it again, in center mass, like you are a dead eye marksman. Um, however, when it almost reaches the board drone, a shimmering transparent field uh, appears right before it would impact the drone. And with a joosh kind of sound of effect, the phaser blast is disrupted and dissipated. Right. Um, yeah, I'm just going to yell out. Uh, I've adapted. That was fast. <laughs> all right. And that is uh, all Williams can do, I believe. Yeah. So it is now the Borg's turn again. And uh, hey, Cartwright, how you doing, buddy? Oh, uh, well enough, sir. Thank you. Well, you're getting a Borg drone. And your number to beat here... Oh, dear. Uh, your number to beat is a six. Which, what? Which I don't think that is technically possible, even because you're a supporting character. Yeah. I don't even think no. it's possible. Right. Right. No. But it's it's okay, because as you maybe bring up your, bring up your blade to block the incoming uh, tubules. Uh, maybe it's your unique physiology. Maybe it's just because this board drones tubules never fully developed. But as the tubules impact your skin, uh, you only take three stress worth of damage, um, which means that you are not injured, which is, I'll go ahead and reveal this mechanic to you. If you are injured by tubules, then you are considered to be in the assimilation process. Um, so the good news is that you're not being affected by that, but you are still taking the three stress damage. But to Alel, who maybe doesn't know the mechanics of what's going on, you did just get tubed. And then, yeah, oh. it comes to either <laughs> Cartwright, Rast, or Alel. Does Cartwright want to react to that? Yes, uh, if you wouldn't mind letting me go here. Sure. Yeah. Take it away. And uh, just one point of order. I think we have five momentum instead of four because we got one momentum from Williams. Mm -hmm. We went for he, uh, the swift test get, took off two. We had five. Swift test was two. Brought us down to three. Then he just gave us one to four. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, so I will unsheathe this... Uh, it looks like a cavalry saber, a British cavalry saber, but it is vastly larger to fit the the uh, sort of robust physique of uh, a hydran species. Mm -hmm. And I will attempt to slash at the Borg, deflecting the uh, the blow that it made. You have the cavalry yell saber. Is you that have why yell... you have horses behind you? Oh, uh, you have to yell charge in your accent. <laughs> or tally ho. Tally ho. <laughs> That would be most uh, embarrassing, sir. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Must maintain a proper decorum. And yeah, that's going to be a uh, daring security here. And yeah. the good news, it, oh god, you need to get at least three successes here. Okay. Let's go, Kurt, right? You then got this. I will buy a die. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's, Let's go. Let's things. go. Four successes, which means you get a momentum right back. And yeah, go ahead and roll me for you. It is seven challenge die. So that is a grand total of six, seven, eight, nine. Cartwright, how are you killing your Borg drone? Uh, Well, I sort of bat away the hand that has been attempting to inject me with the simulation tubules. And then... I use the momentum to carry through a follow-up swing using the saber, and I just hack at the throat of the Borg. And you have this burst of sparks and uh, the simulated blood, and the uh, Borg drone topples over under the force of this the hefty swing. I love it. So uh, you dispatch your Borg drone, no problem. And uh, would you like to swift task, or is it the Borg's turn? Uh, it's still the first round, right? So we have quick action. So this is something that I've been trying to find consensus on because the devs have said one thing, the book says another. As far as I read, and I think this is the way we'll play it from now on, um, the quick to action does let you ignore the uh, keeping the momentum cost, um, but you can only do that once per round meaning that you can't just quick to action multiple times, if that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah. It's quick to action specifically is worded as the first mini combat. You can do that. Mm -hmm. But if we can keep doing it, absolutely. Right. And I think that's what the devs meant when they said that you're not supposed to be able to spam uh, things like that, like keep the momentum spend, because then it turns into like a one-sided kind of deal, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. it's always seemed a little bit broken to me, so that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I will forego further action, and I will allow some of us to go. Okay. Well, the board After drones the board. are going to get to go. Yes. And uh, Matic, how do you feel about things, buddy? Oh, well. Fuck it. It's <laughs> the worst that can happen. You need to get me uh, three successes here, buddy. That's it? Come on. Well, the the bad news is if you don't get your three successes, you're getting plasma cuttered. It's daring security, right? Daring security. Buy an extra one. (laughs) Just take the plasma cutter like a man. (laughs) I've already been hit once. I don't I don't need to be hit again. Dead man. Game over, man. Game over. I don't have enough what the full fuck focus. What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Do you want to spend your determ you've already spent already your determination? Spent so mad um, I'm trying to think Technically of Technically I do have the saved spotlight from uh Zombie Planet whenever we were in combat. This is true. I could use that to re roll. Otherwise, you are facing an injury here, which you would have to spend two momentum to remain in combat. Why haven't we beamed out yet, guys? Come on. Do we have the thing? You don't have the transport coil yet. Yep, it's right here. All we have to do is beam out with it. <laughs> beam, beam. That was my bat left. Am I, am I right, <laughs> Mike? Like, like, all we have to do is just say, hey, we're beaming the fuck out. And it locks on and we go. Let's just say there's a reason I've kept for a threat. <laughs> well, well Alala's an opulent, so she doesn't care. All right. She's I'll, like, I'll, I'll get will, it over uh, I will spend the, uh, the spotlight milestone from uh, previous combat. Okay. Uh, the lessons I learned from it. Um, s- survive. Um, don't be taken over by my, and become a mindless drone. Fair. Whether that's through nanotechnology or through uh, whatever the fuck is the what it was a pheromone that the zombie planet was using. Something to that effect. Yes. The pheromone. Yeah. I'm just rolling the one zero. Mm-hmm. If you roll a complication oh, here, oh thank God, you did not. So you've rolled three successes, which means you may roll your blade damage, which is a grand total of seven challenge dice. Uh, 
click the right thing. And that is enough. Please describe how your Borg drone goes down. Um, Matic is trying to pull... Uh, she's typing on the... Uh... Oh, what the hell is it called? Track order? Pad? Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Matic is uh, tapping on the track order trying to help the SAR uh, come back, I guess is the best way to put it. Um they both realize that their job's done and they need to pull out of the uh, program to make sure that um, the SARS uh, program and isn't corrupted and that he isn't assimilated. Um, as the drone gets closer, uh, Matic, and it goes to uh, use the plasma cutter on uh, Matic, he uh, steps back slightly and then uses the Borg's momentum to kind of push it into the, uh, towards the steam vent that's blowing. Um, as soon as the steam hits it and the Borg uh, kind of starts slowing down, Matic pulls the uh, Serto Draco sword he has and uh, just straight pierces where the Borg heart should be. And uh, it whirs and chitters and literally slides off your blade onto the floor. Very nice. Which means it is now either Rast or Alel's turn. Um, Rast will go. Yeah. So Rast is going to, uh, maybe foolishly, uh, engage this drone here. Okay. And to keep with the suspense, I'm going to wait to roll the board drone. So it is a daring security. The difficulty is one, but remember, uh, the more successes you have, the more I have to beat to hurt you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll use our three current momentum. Okay. Come on, make him dump that threat. <laughs> or wait. Fighting these Borg with melee weapons automatically don't doesn't it automatically give you a threat because we are going for lethal? Uh, I've hand waved that because I always found that a silly rule, <coughs> uh, especially against Borg drones because there's if you don't kill them they're just gonna get up anyway. Um, so don't worry about it. Uh, but that is a grand total of five successes. Uh, the Borg drone has rolled two, so you may continue to chop up Rast. Go ahead and roll me seven challenge die. Okay. And how much momentum do we end up getting? Uh, you end up getting three momentum. Okay. Oh, so what I spent. Mm -hmm. How nice. All right. So you run over and uh, how are you uh, tearing this one a new one? So he slashes out, ripping through its through its chest with the uh, with the dagger. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's the ability to attack again. Did you say? It's not needed, but yes. Because what what he's what I was planning on doing was after I slash that one, spin around and throw the uh, dagger at the uh, one in the west call. Ooh, I love it. Uh, that would be a control security. The difficulty would be a three. Okay. Control security difficulty three. And since I earned those uh, three momentum, I'll just take spend them. them. I'll spend them right back. Alrighty, get us some more momentum now. While you're at, I'll try. All complications, <laughs> right? No, that is uh, five successes, so you get two momentum right back. Boom. And uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me another seven challenge die. Wow. Oof. So. Oh. Almost right like, face. yeah, I was and that say, one goes like right into his ocular uh, implant. Yeah, and uh, this time, like the arm of the Borg drone comes up to maybe touch the the handle of the blade, and then it just sort of collapses to the side, just twitching and otherwise spasming as it is more or less dead on the spot. Now, what I would say, uh, Rast, is that does take away your melee weapon for the moment. Yeah, he's still got a sword. This is true. <laughs> so he can always pull that, but he will be going over there, there to get his uh, get his knife. All right. 
So he had to take out these two because otherwise they would have come for LL. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I have good news for LL, but bad news for Cartwright. Mm-hmm. Bye. Okay. So, Mr. Cartwright, to keep with the suspense, Ugh. I need you to roll me a daring security uh, difficulty of one just to succeed. But remember, the more successes, yada, yada, yada. And I will buy an extra die if you don't mind. Oh, of course. All right, four successes for all the, mar- all the marbles. What do you got for me, Borg Drone? Only one success, which means you get a grand total of three momentum off that, and you may consider ch- uh, chopping up this drone as you wish. Uh, the Borg jo- Drone sort of lumbers towards me, and it makes a clumsy swipe. Um, as it does so, I sort of almost body it to the side, and force it down onto my blade, stabbing it through the chest. Very nice. Oh, yell have at you. <laughs> the ship and sovereign. Oh, yeah, there hey, you go. Did you have to roll the challenge dice? I'm going to hand wave it because oh, okay, cool. uh, at this point, uh, we've had the combat I think we've needed to. Mm-hmm. Or I say that uh, because as you all begin to retrieve your weaponry, uh, I'm not going to put a thousand tokens on the map, but just imagine from all eight sides, a mass of Borg drones is coming in your way. There is no way you can hold off that many drones. Uh, we need to go. And rare, if you can lock on to our signal, please beam us out. Uh, beam us directly to Sick Bay, and she wants to take Cartwright there. Good call. And uh, Jensen answers, uh, trying right now, sir. Don't uh, try, just do it. Sir? What? There, There's another force field. Oh, damn it. Uh, I will spend two momentum to create an advantage that on the way on the way of pulling Vassar out, mm-hmm. um, the two of them, one of the two of them would have implemented a uh, retrograde virus that... Uh, would affect the power systems and would cause any force fields to only respond intermittently. Um, they wouldn't be full force fields. Okay. So that will allow Jensen to enable this transport. So let's have Vassar roll for Jensen this time. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so Vassar, Jensen <laughs> is rolling a control and engineering and the difficulty on this, uh, let's break it down. So it's two to start with. And then because you are transporting uh, in a transporter room, it goes down to a one. But you guys are not on a transporter pad, so it goes back up to two. You have advanced sensors. It goes down to one. And then I'm spending my remaining threat to make it a difficulty of two. And to make the complication range a 18 to 20. Doesn't the uh, transporter buffers also drop the difficulty down by one? Well, I, that's what that's what you get for being in the transporter room. Does the ship get an assist for Jensen? It does indeed. It is getting, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe it is a sensors engineering. I'll take that. Right. So Jensen doesn't appear to have any applicable focuses unless power supplies works. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. That's not going to help him here. The Fenrir helps. All right. Uh, click of the dice. It's it's a uh, 2d20. Unless you want to spend momentum for more. Spend one. How many momentum do we have? We two. have two. So you would get uh, 3d20. Uh, Just go ahead and do it. Yeah. You said it was uh, control engineering? Uh, yep. So if we spend the two, we get three? No, yes. spend the one. Yeah. It's and one for three the three, dice. yes. Yep. One for the three, okay. And here we go. Oh. Ah. Oh. 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 You ah. may, uh, Jensen, you've murdered us all. <laughs> so uh, Jensen uh. comes over the comms and says, uh, Sir, I'm downgrading to a negative one. <laughs> Medic to Sceneri. This is Sceneri. Go ahead. Why are you calling me? Uh, prep. I want to say goodbye. (laughs) No, no, no. Prep the medbay for a, uh, 
Mr. Jensen. Um, <laughs> when the away team returns to the ship, uh, I may Vulcan neck pinch him again in a much less nicer way. Captain says, I thought you couldn't do that. <laughs> Plausible deniability. Of this conversation. <laughs> Borg. Yeah, the Borg are advancing. I would say you maybe have about two more actions before the Borg are upon you. Uh, Rast is going to pick out the area where m the most Borg are mm -hmm. and overload his rifle and throw it down the hall. Okay, so you throw it down the hallway and uh, it detonates, but the same problem happens where that shimmering force field comes up across the Borg's body and completely just evis or not eviscerates, evaporates the energy blast. I was thinking more of damaging the walls. Well, that is a key thing. So yes, you do damage the walls and they begin jetting out steam and other bits of obscuring matter, uh, which means that we'll say from the west, uh, for example, the west passageway, you've bought yourself an extra round, but the other seven, you have two more rounds. What did we talk about earlier that we didn't want to do, which was something we might want to do now, which was... Vent the atmosphere? Vent the atmosphere. <laughs> and then somehow we can <clears throat> figure it out. <laughs> Well, what I can say is Jensen can try again. I'm just going to make the complication range increase. A rest hollers at him. Do better. <laughs> All right. So, Vassar, uh, we're going to continue picking on you. I need you to roll me another control engineering with the ship assisting with sensors engineering. Difficulty of two. Spin that last momentum. Mm -hmm. Just remember the complication range is a 17 to 20. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh dear. My God. What? what? Oh my. Oh dear. <laughs> That's just the ship roll. Okay, so here's what's on the field right now. You've got your two successes. So we can either play this one of two ways. Either I can be a dick or I cannot be a dick. Which do I want to be? Up to you. You've been really nice. The former. All the former. Night, sure. just... You've been nice all night. I, I say it's time to be a dick. But the rules I mean... have been in our favor tonight. You haven't had a whole lot of fun. So I have good news and bad news. Which would you like first? The bad, bad news. news. Always the bad news. I'm going to give you the good news first. The good news. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> bad news. Do you want <laughs> the bad news? Why even ask us? <laughs> the good news is you materialize back on the Fenrir as the shimmering blue light takes you. Oh, I know. Oh, fuck. Who's the, the bad news? I, I know what the bad news is. The bad news is you look around and you're all there, but the transwarp coil the coil's not so not much. There. <laughs> what? Jensen! I'm sorry, sir. I was under pressure. J mm. I, I, I could maybe try once more. It, it should be easier with, without needing to get the six of you. Stop Just, talking! Get, do Get it. the fuck out of my way. And <laughs> Maddox will go over there and do it. Do you like literally punch him or neck pinch him or just shove him? Or... Oh, Maddox just full on like shoulder check like into the wall. Like, get the fuck out of my way. Roll me, uh, roll me your unarmed strike damage, which is going to be one <laughs> plus your uh, security score. That's just a KO, Jen. Says. Security score is a four. You didn't tell me you were getting the coil. Can Vassar assist in the beam out to the ship by uh, <laughs> I, uh, connecting I the Vassar? Was gonna Vassar say, is gonna, the beat down. I Vassar thought is, <laughs> no, Vassar is going to reconnect to uh, Fenrir's computer and immediately upload all of the details regarding the board technology to uh, the transporter sensors to be able to enhance them around the force fields. Okay, and I will say that Vassar can also assist on this. And huh. you're going to be doing a control and an engineering of your own. Who's assimilating technology now? Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> oh, shit. That's security. That's all right. Sense. So for all the marbles, Matic, can you get this transwarp coil? Control engineering. I will give you um, a threat for another dice. Would cybersecurity apply as a specialty? Most definitely. Oh, yes. Um, so this is Vassar's assist. 
nothing. Oh. Yay, that didn't do anything. The ship is still assisting, right? Yes, the ship is still assisting okay. with sensors engineering. Okay, three successes for Matic. Now we just don't want to see a complication on the ship. So I roll for the ship. Come on. All right, Can you all right. just do that? <laughs> uh, uh, hang on. All right. Somebody roll. Oh, I thought that was you volunteering. I thought I heard the clicking. I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to roll. <laughs> Somebody's got it. Otherwise, I'm going to. Are you, are you rolling? No, I thought, again, I thought you were. Okay, all right, all right, I'm going to do it. 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 Oh, God. What am, I, what, am I, what am I rolling to Sensors ship engineering. All right. <laughs> Fuck. This, this is not the top this is not, this is not my fault. Okay. okay. Nothing, okay. just okay. No, no complications, stuff. Is you're the good. complication range still 17? Yes. So you're good. Okay. I have a complication. Hold on. Don't Hold worry. on. There are two complications. I rolled one, and the Vassar rolled one using textbook technical expertise. I want Vassar to re-roll his zero. Okay, so Vassar, so re-roll your zero. <laughs> Please get a critical. The love of everything that is holy. <laughs> Do advanced sensors apply, considering we're using sensors? I've already applied all that to bring it to a, oh, uh, to a difficulty. This is uh, control engineering? Correct. Yeah. Uh, that's one. God, that's okay. Please. Do I just re-roll the same roll? Or? Yep. Yeah, yep. that's what you're doing. That's what my town allows me to do. Whenever the sensors uh, aid me, I can re-roll. I can re choose any dice to re-roll. Okay. Okay, so let's break this down. You so have four, one, two, successes, three, four successes, which you had two successes needed, which means if you give me the two momentum you would have buy gained, off the you can buy off the complication. Yes. Do it. Yes, do it. Yes. All right. I'm doing that. So <laughs> narratively, Matic, you run over and you full body <sighs> just check uh, Jensen into the wall. <laughs> and Jensen slams into the wall and probably has a light concussion. And he says, all right, oh, I'm at a negative boy. five. Ow. And uh, you, your <laughs> fingers dance over the console. And materializing on the pad, thankfully, is the transwarp coil you went to go retrieve. Did we get our transporter? Matic to captain. <laughs> This is the captain. We got it. Uh, I'll file the report later. I'll <laughs> also report to your office for disciplinary action later. Medic out. It may be wise to plot a course away from the vehicle as it is regenerating. Oh, yeah. We need to get the fuck out of Dodge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's do the thing where we drop the ship off in the thing and then collapse let's, the thing let's and then... do the thing with the thing yep yeah and we can say that the captain has been setting up the program to basically enact all of this mm -hmm. um so i'm only going to require a few more rolls and they're mostly for flavor so uh all complications in the excitement of all this you are able to install the transwarp coil because at this point in the level of technology and the level of knowledge about board design in this era you're able to fit the transport coil very easily to the fenrir and when you eventually arrive at the Una complex uh what you find is that uh there's a battle taking place between the lore and two borg spheres and as you arrive uh captain you are getting a hail from the lore screen Appearing on screen is a frazzled-looking Captain Sin. And she says, oh, thank the heavens, you're finally here. Please tell me you have us a way out of here. I sure do. Well, uh, we're kind of trapped, as you can see. And uh, something I forgot to say there was the Borg Sphere Beta has the Malor in one of those Borg tractor beams. Oh, well, we still have our fancy, two, fancy... Two transphasic torpedoes would be ashamed to, to leave here and waste them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I say fire at that. We're at the point. Just fire. Okay. Just fire. Just fire it. <laughs> so is that a direct order from the captain? Yes. Fire at where the tractor beam is. All right. <laughs> holding them. So, captain, you get to roll a presence command. Okay. Uh, Williams, you're going to be rolling me a control security. Uh, this is a difficulty of three. And the ship will assist you with a uh, weapon security, but because you are aiming at a tr at a specific target, 
the difficulty increases by one, so it is a difficulty of four. I can roll for Fenrir. I got it, sorry. Um, so, GM, I'm going to give you a point of threat to get an extra die. Okay. <clears throat> oh, don't be sorry. You got two successes. Um, <laughs> Composure? <laughs> I, I don't know the whatever I I... didn't really sell me on the on the composure bit but I didn't say whatever um, so yeah <laughs> three successes for Williams uh, plus we're one extra four okay. for I don't even need no focus <laughs> all right so we're at six seven total so that is a grand total of four momentum or three momentum so yeah go ahead and roll me uh, some challenge die here that's gonna be a grand total of nine challenge die. Uh, yeah, that was nine Good. successes total. All right. Well, I'm going to say with that many hits, uh, if you give me the momentum you just got, you may blow up the sphere. Blow hey. it up, blow it up, blow it up. Take it, take it all. All right. So, <laughs> Williams, your hands, similarly to Maddox, just masterfully execute a Sonata on your console, and the transphasic torpedoes you have soar out from the Fenrir and impact the sphere right where the tractor beam is, and the tractor beam dissipates, and the, the USS Nalor uh, swings free and begins making a beeline for the transwarp conduit. Meanwhile, the Borg sphere just completely begins to cascade explosions across its hull and utterly detonates, sending shards of Borg stuff everywhere. And so at this point, uh, what I need is whoever wants to do the helm check... For you all to get in the conduit and then detonate the ship you brought with you. The, uh, the, uh, what is that? The Zanad ship you brought with you. Uh, yeah, it was the, I, I believe you said the, the Stacker. Yes. Something like that. Um, so what you need to do, whoever's <laughs> going to be rolling the helm check, it's a daring con, it's a difficulty of three. The ship will assist you with an engines con, but because you fired torpedoes and gave me a threat, I have two threat, which means I'm going to spend that two threat to make it a difficulty of four. Williams, you got us here. You can get us out. Well, I was oh, thinking this... Rast might be a good one for this one. <laughs> I was... Or we can use our actual con officer. That I too. Mean, you could you use know. her. She's an NPC. She doesn't have... <laughs> That's well, plot armor. Oh. All right. I rolled for the ship. I got us one success. All right. You said this is a daring con. Daring yeah. con. Cool. And give him a threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one extra die. Smoke him if you got him. Behind the scenes, can Vasar be coordinating? Oh science lord! In engineering. Fucking fuck. Determination reroll there? I don't have any determination. I used it already. All right, hold on, hold on. You still have Can I give you determination? Yes, you're a captain. You can do that. I'm giving you that. All right. Do it again. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is fantastic. The determination comes as a form in a form of you can feel her eyes boring into the back of your skull (laughs) as you're doing this. Perfect. Yes, Williams just sort of straightens up. Goes, ah, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. That's what you needed. So Beautiful. The Fenrir soars past uh, the exploding Borg sphere with the uh, the God. I can't even remember my the Zanad ship in tow. <laughs> and as the Nalor and the Fenrir enter the transwarp conduit, the Fenrir fires off a quantum torpedo to hit the Zanad ship, and Immediately, it detonates, sending a cascading sort of undulating wave outwards that completely destroys the Unicomplex and otherwise destabilizes the transwarp conduit behind you. And it's a rocky few minutes as you are literally on the bleeding edge of this shockwave. But all said and done, you emerge right next to Deep Space Daedalus where... You have conceivably just run into yourselves. On our way out. On your way out. So for a very moment, your sensors would have recorded a log that you saw yourselves 
But before anyone can act on it, they have slung, slingshotted it around the sun and have vanished into time. Beautiful. And uh, immediately, as soon as you arrive again, uh, a hail comes in. Uh, who is it? It is Admiral Tashi. I almost want the <sighs> captain to say, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you want? <sighs> We're kind of busy. On screen. Appearing on screen is your uh, Vulcan Admiral, and she says, I would make a comment about your efficiency, Captain, but you just left. There's no way you could have completed it. Did Maddox do some bullshit? I was going to ask if you're aware Maddox is on this ship. <laughs> and she just face palms and goes, oh, God. Forward me the disciplinary report. Good work. And she cuts comms. <laughs> Well, I guess I'm already being disciplined. Maddox will sit down, <laughs> open up one of the uh, panels. You'll see his arm go all the way into it. After a couple minutes, he smiles and pulls out a bottle of scotch. Anybody want some? And he'll just take a swig right there on the bridge. The captain wants some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, passes it around. Yeah. Oh. I love it. Yeah. And I think that's where we're going to end today's session as we just see everybody on the bridge having a little something. <laughs> so, yeah, good session, guys. I thought that was a uh, good way to end it. That was really tense there for a moment, especially oh. with those rolls. Yeah. That was that was clutch. You give me anxiety. That's my goal. <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> All right. Well, this is where I'm going to cut the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, hopefully you guys had a good time listening in and we'll see these guys next week. Bye, stream. Bye.